Okay guys, now we know Bernoulli's equation, I would like to revisit the hovercraft and we see how Bernoulli's equation applies to it. And I think this is one of the most interesting problems that I face and I hope that I can show that excitement and that interest in solving it with you. And we're going to solve it right now. So, here's the problem. The, we've got a volumetric flow rate of air that's going inside the hovercraft. There's a pump over here and the pump... Sorry, sorry about that. There's a pump over here and the pump basically just sucks in the air and it shoots out the air in a radial direction. Now, as we know with hovercraft, the air that goes in the radial direction is used to support the craft up. So this is a layer of air. And we'll label the dimensions basically R, uh, D is the, the depth and Z X is going up. Now, we also want to observe that the velocity of the air, or likewise, possibly the pressure of the air is going to vary as, as R varies. So maybe the pressure over here and the pressure over here and here are different, but we'll soon find it out. So, our objective of today's lesson is to use Bernoulli's equation to find, ultimately, the force that supports the hovercraft up at a distance of D. And obviously, in doing so, we need to find the pressure. That's why we need to use Bernoulli's equation. So without further ado, let's start. Okay. Remember, Bernoulli's equation, apply it by drawing a streamline at a certain point to another point in the volume, in the control volume, even though you know, we don't need to specify the control volume. Now, mistake number one that you may want to draw from here to over here, but uh, kind of thinking that this is the distance in which the pressure or is the pressure that we want to analyze. You want to find a pressure equation as we vary from R from the center. So you want to draw the, the, the line of the streamline like this. Well, certainly that is a mistake to do. Why? Because remember, Bernoulli's equation is the conservation of mechanical energy. That is to say that there cannot be an external energy that acts from the streamline because it's a conservation of mechanical energy. If you draw the streamline like this, the pump adds mechanical energy. So this equation is certainly wrong. Or this story, this line of force is certainly wrong. Instead, we will just draw it over here just before the pump and as the air moves from the point over here. Now, what I like about Bernoulli's equation is that the line of force may not take a regular shape. As a matter of fact, the line of force could be moving all around here and then end up at a point over here. Nonetheless, we are just analyzing two points of the line of force at this point over here and this point over here. For the sake of solving the question, the pressure over here, let's just label it as P0 a constant, which is a constant because the volumetric flow rate is a constant. So, we want to apply Bernoulli's equation. Let's say constant number one or the first constant, or let's just write constant over here, is pressure, pressure plus half rho v squared plus P G Z. Okay, we define the exact. Uh, um, sorry, rho G Z. The Z axis over here. Now, this is going to be equal to the constant. Let's just write a constant first because what we're going to do is that we're going to apply this statement to the point over there and apply this same this equation to the point over there and equate the two because both of them are equal to the constant. So. Without further ado, let's continue, proceed. Now, what is V? Now, remember, V is the linear velocity. How are we going to get the linear velocity from here? Well, basically, it's very easy. We've defined this as C. C is the diameter of the, the pump. It's the diameter of the pump. So, if we got the volumetric flow rate, wouldn't it make sense that we take the volumetric flow rate and divide it by the area to get the linear velocity as given by V over here? So, what we can do is that we can write V equals to the volumetric flow, flow rate divided by the area. The area will simply be pi C divided by 2 squared, which is going to be equals to Q and it will be a C4, sorry, C squared and a 4 pi. Or we can just simply rearrange it as 4 pi Q, bring this to the top and C squared. Is that fine? Sorry, the pi is at the bottom. Yeah, that is okay. So this is the, the linear velocity. Remember, linear velocity of the water particles. Volumetric flow rate divided by area. There we go, our first constant analyzing the point over here of the streamline that we have drew. Now, we want to analyze the Bernoulli's equation at the point over there. We want to apply Bernoulli's equation to the point over there. Ultimately, what is the quantity that we want to find? The quantity that we want to find is the pressure. For right now, let's suppose that the pressure is an equation with respect to R. Well, does it make sense? Yes, it does, because maybe as we move out, out into the this or out of the hovercraft, the pressure drops. Now, I also want you to draw your attention that this does not equal to atmospheric pressure. Why doesn't it equal the atmospheric pressure? Well, if it's equal to atmospheric pressure, the velocity of the water particles along this point would all be the same because it's, the pressure is the same. But we found out that the velocity u in our previous lesson of the hovercraft, it depends on r. So that is also to say that this pressure can also depend on r, or we so suppose, which we will. So let's apply Bernoulli's equation to that point over there. P R plus half half rho 
Okay, V squared. V squared, it will just right now take it as the mean velocity at that point. We will assume mean velocity because if we really want to have a proper analysis, we will use the proper velocity function, which we have found out in a previous video. It was quite a complicated um, equation. But right now, let's just use the mean velocity, which we will define as u dash squared plus with, the next one is rho gravity, and we need to include z. I hope you can see that. Why do we need to include z? Because z, the distance from here to here varies as z varies. So basically, z is still a variable. We need to include z. Now, let's settle the, the u, the mean velocity first. The mean velocity is simply going to be the volumetric flow rate divided by the circumference. Sorry, divided by the area of the, the circumference like that. Okay, I hope you can see that, which is basically 2 pi r d. 2 pi r is to get the, the circumference and we multiply by d. So we are going to divide the volumetric flow rate by the, the surface area at which the air flows out. Just have a think about it, you will trust me on this one. Now, we can write that as p r plus with half rho. Now, we are going to have to square that, so it's going to be q squared is going to be 4 pi squared r squared d squared and then plus rho g z bearing in mind again that z is still a variable so this is going to be the constant we're dealing with this is going to be the other constant we're going to deal with and after and what we're going to do now is we'll just simply equate the two now we're going to equate the two keeping this on one side so how about i will keep this on one side bring this whole thing over there and arrange the terms appropriately which is going to be quite difficult to do as you can see but let's do my i'll do my best okay two is here We'll cancel this out, we'll put an 8 over here. Okay, we can bring out the rho, we can bring out the q squared, and we also can bring out the pi, pi squared. Right, so it'll be pr is going to be equals to, this is going to be equals to this, so we'll keep the p naught here, we'll plus with this thing over here, but we'll bring out the rho, the q squared, and the pi squared. Correct? And then we'll open the parentheses, and we will have 8 divided by c to the uh, divided by c to the 4 and we'll subtract bringing this to out so we got 1 divided by 2 r2 to the 2 d to the power 2 close parentheses plus rho g d take away z there we go and this my friends is our pressure function radially outwards uh, uh, co comparing it to Bernoulli's equation However, we are not satisfied about that because ultimately what is our goal? Our goal is to find the force that supports the hovercraft. That, and by knowing in mind that the pressure varies. So, what I'm going to do first is that what is the force that supports the hovercraft? The force that supports the hovercraft is basically the force that goes up like that. Now, and what do we need? We need the pressure at that point. Well, basically what is the pressure at that point? We will let z, our variable distance, equals to d to analyze the pressure at that point. So, we let z equals to d. This one is eliminated. Well, that is fair enough. Now, the next one is that pressure is in terms of the radial distance r. So, the force at, at this point, the force at this point over here, the force at this point over here, correct me if I'm wrong, it's going to be different, right? So, what does that come in? Well, let's just use some calculus. Okay, we label the force as df. Previous, um, it also ties in the concept at pressure at a point, which really I do hope that you watch all my videos. Pressure at a point. The pressure at this point is the same whether I'm directing the force in that direction or whether di I'm directing the force at that direction. It's still the same. So I can just immediately use that pressure and multiply it by the area to get the force that goes up. However, like I said, pressure is different. So dF is going to be the pressure function PR multiplied by the area. So what is the area? Now, I would, it's very difficult to analyze using the differential calculus, but I'm going to try to try my, my best. You in, transpose this down, you get a circular um, ring like this. And what we're going to do is that we're going to analyze a small dr. I hope you can see that. So this is looking from the top, from the top down. So we're going to analyze a small dr. That point over here is going to be the same pressure because the distance is small. That pressure is going to be given by this equation over here. However, we need to take into account all the points around that same ring. So what we're going to do is that the pressure function times with 2 pi r, 2 pi r, yes, 2 pi r to get the circumference, but we need that small little area, so we're going to multiply by a dr to get that small little gap over here where the pressure is the same at all the points given by the pressure function. Lastly, 
force, now we can go with our integration, it's going to be integrate 0 to r, big R for the radius, pr to pi r dr. So what we're going to do, we bring the r inside here, integrate accordingly, the 2 pi can bring out, and that my friends is the force that supports the half graph. Very nice problem, I like it a lot, okay, and I, you, I can't do the integration right now, I'm going to leave it as it is, but really it's in essence recognizing how to find the pressure function, applying Bernoulli's equation with the streamline, analyzing the area, the force at the point, and taking the integration, taking the integral, and there we go, Hubble Crab revisited, I think a part 3 is coming up, so I hope you enjoy it.